kind of my role in CES is I am the Overseas Teacher Training Coordinator, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we shorten it to OST. OST are Overseas Teachers. Um, so my responsibilities as a, the OST coordinator is designing um, courses, further development courses for uh, in-service training. So we look at CLIL, content, learning and uh, content and Language Integrated Learning. We look at methodology courses, blended learning courses, and then intensive language development. So we offer four in-service courses for uh, professional teachers who come over during the summer. Um, I teach the courses and then I'm also the point, point of contact for all the Erasmus Plus documents and funding and all of this. And um, that's the boring stuff. That's, that's what I do. So, with the person beside you or kind of in groups, Marianne, you might need to jump over a little bit because you've lost all your people. Um, what do you know? Do you know anything about kind of in-service training courses for professional teachers who are coming from Spain, Italy, you know, across the world? Um, and what would you like to know? And hopefully by the end of my, my quick talk, I'll have answered some of your questions and then you can ask me. So I'll give you two minutes. Okay. So I see I can't hear everybody, but I did hear a few words. I heard something about it being unstructured. I heard a lot of we don't know what it is. And even even within my own school, a lot of people look at me during the summer and go, God, you're so busy. What are you doing? And I was like, it, it takes too long to explain. Nobody really knows uh, what, I, what I do within the school. So hopefully, after, I'm going to give you some information, a little bit about what I do, and hopefully that will answer some of the, um, what you want to know, or what is it. And like I said, then I'll have a little bit of time for you to ask me some questions if there's anything more specific that you want to know. Um, so, the courses that we uh, run and that, I, that I'm involved with, uh, we have Phil, so like I said, Content and Language Integrated Learning. So this is a course aimed primarily at teachers of other subjects that are teaching through English. Um, so it's mostly high school, secondary school teachers that come over. We do get some primary school teachers. So these would be teachers in Italy, France, throughout Europe, across the world that are teaching history, maths, science through English. Um, so it might be that they're teaching a lot of the course through English or just some units. And they come over to get ideas about how to, uh, how to do this, how to in integrate the English into their classroom. Then we do a general methodology course. This is aimed at uh, non-native English teachers, so teachers who are teaching English. Um, so it would just be uh, kind of like what we do on a daily basis. <coughs> then we do blended learning. So, Mohammed, I'd like to talk to you later. Uh, but focusing on the integration of technology um, in the lessons, um, we, we kind of, we're not at the fully online aspect yet because a lot of the teachers think that's what they want to do and then they arrive and they actually go, actually all I want to do is use tech in my classroom, that's it. I just want to know about Kahoot or Padlet or how to incorporate this. So that's what we uh, generally focus on. And then we have an intensive language development course. So this is uh, for teachers who just want to come for a week and get as much development as they can. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't have time to go into a general English class and spend a month here because they, they have quite limited uh, holidays, obviously. So this is aimed mainly at our CLIL teachers here because a lot of the time they'll be teachers who are experts in history and then they're told one day by the school, OK, so next year we want you to start teaching in English. Yeah. And they're pre-intermediate themselves. I had a teacher mm -hmm. once, she had a poor girl who was the head of their CLIL programme for maths and she was an elementary speaker. Like, and she had to develop a whole course in English. And they picked her because she was the best English speaker out of the school. Um, so sometimes it's those teachers, but we do get a lot of non-native English uh, speaking teachers as well um, who come and they're just looking to build their fluency and their speaking skills um, rather than the actual grammatical side of it. So from the teachers that are coming, what they're looking to get from the course is a refresher of general techniques. A lot of them are here to kind of up, up skill, you know, they want to get up to date ideas about what's going on, the current trends, um, 
a lot of the time they're looking for practical resources as well. A lot of them just want lessons handed to them. Um, advice as well regarding aspects of teaching. So how do you deal with students with dyslexia? How do you deal with 35 kids in a classroom? How do we deal with the monolingual? How can we get them to speak English? Uh, they want to meet other teachers and then uh, develop their own skills and most importantly have a holiday. A lot of them are just here to have a holiday and you know the schools usually fund their trips or they get Erasmus funding to come so, so that's a big aspect for them as well. So very quickly one minute in your groups. Uh, what's the difference between an in-service course like this and a pre-service course like Celt or Celta? What are some differences? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> 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 Okay, so any ideas what would the difference between these kind of OST in-service courses and a pre-service course be? Oh, well, in-service, I, I presume they're already teaching. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anything else? Any other sure. big differences? Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> they're experienced teachers. They, you know, they, they know the basics of teaching. You're not, trying, you're not there to teach them how to teach. Um, they, yeah, they have their own ideas of what they should be doing and how they should be doing it. So, um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, the, these courses are often funded by government schemes or by their school as well. So very few of them are actually paying for the course out of their own pocket, which does have an influence on, on how they see the course as well. Uh, much shorter, like like Mama said, you know, usually we run for one or two weeks. We do sometimes get teachers who come for longer and they would do multiple courses, but the course is actually just a set one week course or a two week course because they don't have the time. They're taking time out of their holidays the same way as you're taking time out of your weekend to be here. Um, they have really clear objectives from what they want. You know, it's not just like a student who's coming here for a month to study English and just wants to improve. They know exactly what they want to gain from that course, and they're not afraid to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, a quick brainstorm, what are some challenges? We kind of touched on one or two there in the last slide, <coughs> so I'll give you a minute just to chat. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, just shout out a few ideas. What are some challenges? You need to know the content that they want Yes, beforehand. yeah, yeah. And it's not always easy getting it out of them mm. either. Yeah, yeah, they're not always... Uh, I, I send out questionnaires and what are you expecting and what's your yeah. background and I get one word answers. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, anything else? We talked about the philosophy of the teacher's philosophies and their yeah. own yeah. beliefs about what teaching is and if you're, if this, you know, it could be said in their ways, you know, that yes. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's a definite big one. Any others? Sometimes there's a resistance to actually being there. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I come across teachers who are time and time yeah. to teachers who've been told, come sit down with your teaching in English. And then they come here yeah. and they're so angry. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yes. the jobs are at risk if they can't do yeah. English. Yeah, so I mean, really and we spoke about the, the yeah, I mean, we heard earlier about the role of the teachers as a possible counsellor. I think even more so here. You know, the amount of time that I spend just listening to teachers complaining about the school, complaining about the government, the education system, parents, the whole shebang. And you're just listening and you're going, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, don't worry, it's okay. And normally you have mixed nationalities and you go, okay, well, yeah, I know that in Italy is very hard. Do you have the same problem in Spain? And they're like, yeah. And, the, and it can be nice for them to realize that actually, you know what, I think it's just a problem in my country, but everywhere is the same. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> um, so some challenges that I, I was just thought of myself, yeah, and that I've experienced. 
um, for me, because I'm 10 years teaching, but a lot of the teachers that I meet are 20, 25, 30 years teaching. And so, you know, if you're, if you're a younger teacher, the teachers that you're meeting will have a lot of experience, you know, compared to maybe what you have. Um, and they can sometimes take that out and there. It can be a little bit resistant because they think, oh, but you're young and you don't know everything that I know and you have your whole life and you have these ideals and, you, yeah, and it's not always the easiest to manage. Um, they can find it hard to see if you're suggesting a task, you know, and maybe you're looking at something that you know works in your classroom and can be adapted to their classroom. They find it hard to see this and make the connection. I've done loads of activities and I say, you know, about adapting texts and using authentic materials. And they go, but that won't work for me because your text was about science and I'm a history teacher. And I say, okay, but all I need to do is change the text, and I use the same technique. No, it can't work for me. It can't work for me. There's a, a big resistance. Yeah. Um, and like you kind of said, you know, they think their philosophies, they have their ideas, and you know, they think, well, I'm a great teacher. You know, I know this, and you're young, and you don't understand the pressures that I'm under. Um, and it can sometimes get in the way of what they, they want. So I, I think we can all agree sometimes that teachers make the worst students. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they don't like to be challenged about their ideas either, and they don't like to be corrected, um, in my experience. You know, some will and some will love to take that on board, mm. but the majority of them hate it because they feel like you're criticizing mm. their teaching abilities. That's harsh for you then too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they're, they're experts, you know, they are experts in their subject, especially with CLIL teachers. Mm. I don't know all the subjects, you know. I have a background, um, I studied science, but I don't know history, I don't know, geog you know geography, I don't know all the subjects. Um, and when they're asking me questions, they're like, but what vocabulary would you teach in a lesson about, you know, I don't, geography? I'm like, I, I don't know, you're the expert, you tell me. Mm -hmm. I'm, what I'm giving you is a tool that you can use. Yeah. Um, and you have to make that work for you. I can't have a history teacher and a geography teacher and a science teacher and a maths teacher together and be an expert in all of these mm -hmm. subjects. The materials and resources <laughs> and I did hear this group here was saying like you have to make a lot of stuff up and, and create stuff and working on the fly it's really hard to find um, resources for the courses and a lot of the time I found that they don't want to understand why we're doing something they don't want to know anything about theory or the process of it they just want to know how just give me the activity I don't care about understanding it so I can adapt it and create my own I just want an activity, that's it. So, some solutions. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, and it can be very different. It's uh, the most stressful time of year is my summer when I have all these teachers. Um, because yeah, they, they have a lot that they want to get off their chest. They ha a lot of them have been told you have to go because you're gonna start teaching in English. Um, some of them are really genuinely open to seeing new ideas and seeing new techniques. But in my experience, a lot of them come and they see, start to see after a couple of days, like, there's loads of stuff that maybe I, I'm not doing in the class that I could be doing. And they start to feel a little bit insecure about what they're doing. Um, and so it's very much a case of helping them realize without making them feel that way. So some solutions, some things. I, I big up their experience all the time. I'm like, you guys know, I, you know, I'm not a math teacher. You can tell me. Um, I ask them for examples from their classes, you know, what have you experienced? Tell each other lots and lots of personal examples so that they feel that it's relevant to them. Um, I always do like a reflection at the end of the sessions, 10 minute reflection. Okay, so we've seen a lot of activities today. Pick two and adapt them for your class so that when you leave after today's session, you know I have two tasks that I can use because Sometimes not everything is going to be easy for them to relate to their lessons. Um, uh, I'd never ask them to teach. I know in the past I, I took over the role and in the timetable they had a section uh, for teaching, pure teaching. And I observed a couple of them and it was, it was the worst time because it's really hard to teach to teachers. You know, it's really hard to get up in front of people, your peers, who know what you're doing, know why you're doing it, or know what you should be doing, and then you forget something, and, oh, and it's that nervousness and that anxiety. 
Um, so I never ask them to teach. I get them to do workshops and I get them to develop tasks, but never to teach them um, because they panic and they feel like they're put on the spot and then they feel that you're judging them. And I don't know. I don't know what the pressures are of their classroom. I don't know what their subject is, so I can't judge them for this. So I never ask them to teach, uh, but I know a lot of programs will get them to do like a micro-teaching session. Um, I use lots of questions. You know, um, they often, um, and it's quite funny because I know we had earlier, um, Angelos was saying about the dialogues, getting students to go home and record the dialogue and changing things. I have a constant argument with Italian teachers who say, oh, role plays, brilliant. And I say, oh, how do you do the role play? Tell me, tell me what you do. Well, we learn the dialogue from the book. <laughs> and I go, okay, and do you change it? Do you get the students to personalize it or put it in their own thing? No, I, we just learn the dialogue and they perform this. And it's great, it's a great system because you know, when they're going to shops, they feel confident to go into a shop. And I always use the example of the shop because Every dialogue in the book and looking at shops goes, may I help you? <laughs> How often do you, are you asked, may I help you? <laughs> like, it's, it's, are you all right? You know, are you okay? So they don't know how to react. Um, so often what I end up doing is I make materials in relation to the requests. Um, for me, I find this really rewarding. It's demanding, it's tough, but I learn a lot. And I've become like, a, I don't want to say an expert, but I know a lot about, I, I know a little about a lot of things. <laughs> which makes it easy to bluff. <laughs> and yeah, make sure that I keep the theory to a minimum, lots and lots of sample activities. So here's another task, here's another task, here's another task, that's all they want. And I make them feel important. They are the most important people. And I tell them that on the first day, you are the most important people to me. Whatever you want, I can do. Um, <laughs> and it usually works, <laughs> it usually works. Like I said, I know a little about a lot and I can bluff very well.